probably six or seven years old, my father said something to somebody within my hearing about playing the shotgun. And I remember expressing disbelief and saying to him, how would you make music on a shotgun? And he said, well, you put the cleaning rod up the breech and blow across the muzzle. Well, I knew that a dog had a muzzle and I knew that trousers were occasionally called breeches. But you have to understand this was the 50s, the pretty early 50s, and uh, there was no television. And oh, maybe I might have read a couple of Westerns or had a Lone Ranger record or something. But, but uh, information was not available to a kid so much in those days. So I just remembered it until I could figure it out. And in time, of course, I did. The, uh, <clears throat> Uh, what you heard was uh, uh, a, a small range from about a low G, the G at the bottom of the treble staff up to maybe the A above, somewhere in there. And, and I was able to do that. And there are some tricks. As you see that uh, black thing there? That's uh, an O-ring. An O-ring is uh, basically a rubber band, and that can be moved to different places. And I had my thumbnail on there, and, and I knew that the extension of my arm with my thumbnail there was pretty much the low G, uh, which is the note at the, near the bottom of the treble staff. And, and that would be uh, the lowest note in uh, Swanee River. And, and when my thumbnail came up and kind of approached the breach, and I kind of could feel the gun. That was a high A, which was a little higher than the highest note. And so uh, I, I had some idea. Uh, somebody with an ear could play a whole lot better. But basically, the arm isn't long enough to play uh, the full range of the shotgun, which is about the scale of D in two octaves that you can get down just about to a D, uh, you know, by scoozling, the, by scoozling the stick past your hand, that is by moving the stick like this, you can get down. Gets harder and harder. You can make a middle C if you have to. And you can get up two full octaves with a D if you don't mind spraying oil. That's, that's about it. <laughs> and you're wiping your face, but your arm's not long enough to do it. So the first thing I invented, and you'll invent it too, excuse me, is the slide whistle, which is you get yourself a rod uh, and you put a piece of coat hanger on it and you, and you get your hand up about here. And then, let me see if I can... I think these are compatible here, so we'll just be compatible. Maybe they are and maybe they aren't. Let's just check. No, this is a female and that's a male. I'm not compatible. Uh, at any rate, I guess I could change the head. Let me see if I can change the head conveniently. Uh, and change the head. Now this head, uh, you want to use what's known as the wool muff. And the wool muff, the old wool muff, which you find on antique shotgun sticks, looks about like that. Usually it's red and uh, kind of roundy. And what I did was I found a good one. And I found too much oil dribbled past it and ran down the stick and dribbled on the rug, which made your hostess unhappy. So uh, I coated it with a blue gasket material that came into it in a tube at the auto store. <clears throat> a lot of good things at the auto store. And uh, once I got it, I kind of trained it to the shotgun and then I coated it with this plastic stuff. So now I've got this on a, uh, on a uh, piece of coat hanger wire with a hook. Here, you, know, you watch and I'll be able 
to get the full range of the gun here. Let's add a little oil. We've obviously made a bit of a mess. You don't need to get this so closely. Nice to be able to watch your oil can, and not get too much in there. Because you're going to be eating this, by the way, the oil here is uh, pure mineral oil from the, from the uh, drugstore. Uh, so it doesn't taste too bad. Uh, and I often start it with a spray of Pam, which is also not going to be too bad. So now you've got a hook here. Uh, doesn't it look like a slide whistle? Well, of course, that's what it is. It's an embouchure blown slide whistle. So you've got the full range because your hand's here and now your arm is long enough. There is a second voice. Uh, which is no good, but you will discover it, and you might want to use it. It's the overblow. Here's your note. And here's your second voice, your overblow. So you've got a second voice there if you want to get sophisticated about it. I never used it. I didn't like it. Uh, you, you might. There's a lot of possibility. And I want to tell you that the shotgun can be played uh, with very fine accuracy and very musically. You just have to have the ear for it, which I don't. And I've already said that, so I won't need to say it again. I studied three times uh, with different musicians. Of course, none of them know, knew how to play the, the shotgun, but uh, uh, I taught them. And one of the fellows I played with was a local folk singer. And of course, he was a guitar guy, and I, I uh, studied with him for a while. And he thought that I ought to have a fretboard. He saw my problems, and he thought I had to have a fretboard. So I took a gun, and I uh, put some Velcro on the gun. And then I very carefully whittled myself out, I think it was black walnut, I am a woodcarver, uh, a pair, oh, only one, fretboard. And the spaces between the notes are larger at the bottom, just like the guitar neck, and smaller at the top. And I was able to put this fretboard on my gun someplace perfectly like that. I think that's where it went, see? And then I could take my, uh, of course, now that you get a fretboard, you need a tuner. So I made a stick with, uh, with the hook. Can you get down here close enough? With, the, with a tuning device, that turnbuckle, <clears throat> on the hook. So I could put the stick in. I don't have the head on it. And I won't play this gun for you. And I could take the take the, uh, the hook, and I could run my knuckle up the fretboard, see? <laughs> that was a G, or D, that was a D, and here was a G, the B, and it came right up here, and, and I could feel the notes. And it didn't work. Uh, I played even worse. Uh, my wife made it clear to me, I played better in tune without the darn thing, but it kept, kept me from being at sea and not knowing where the heck I was on the gun. But once you get close to a note, you're better off without it because the subtlety is just too fine. Uh, so I don't recommend you do that, but that's part of my story. <clears throat>